Welcome to the segment on coronary artery bypass graft, also called cabbage. Here you'll learn how and why the surgery is done, how to prepare, and what you can expect before, during, and right after your cabbage surgery. Cabbage is one of the most commonly performed heart surgeries. In this surgery, a blood vessel, a vein from your leg or an artery from your arm or chest, is used to bypass a coronary artery that is narrowed or blocked by fatty plaque. The blood vessel is grafted, inserted, to allow blood to flow around or bypass the blockage. Your body won't miss the blood vessel used for the graft. Other vessels in the area will gradually take over. Cabbage is often recommended for people who've already had an angioplasty for a blocked coronary artery and need further treatment. It's also often recommended for people with narrowing or blockage in multiple coronary arteries or their branches. Well, I had a quadruple bypass. That was pretty much the only procedure that I knew. <laughs> they said bypass and there was four of them, so that's what it was. Once I realized that uh, I was going to have to have a quadruple bypass, my, my personality is such that, okay, uh, that's a little more serious than having the broken finger fixed. But I think the more we worry about stuff like that, the more tense or the more pressure we put on ourselves, the worse it is. And I really was pretty, I was pretty, pretty calm and I just thought, well, okay, I'm not worried about anything. I'll just go get it done and then I can come home and go back to work. Because cabbage restores the flow of oxygen-rich blood to your heart, it can give you a new lease on life. Of course, your newly grafted blood vessels are just as prone to fatty buildup as your original arteries, maybe even more so. You need to follow your treatment plan to help your graft stay as healthy and clear as possible. Do exactly what the doctor says. I mean, he put me on an exercise regimen. Uh, slowly at first, of course in the hospital you have your treadmill and stuff while you're still, you know, in the hospital for the first few days. But when you go home, and it's hard, uh, I'll be honest, walking 100 yards and back is like a marathon the first little while, but I got so I was riding a bicycle uh, five miles a day, and, uh, and then it was probably 30 days I went back to work, uh, so uh, I, I, it was okay. I mean, it just, he gave me instructions and, and uh, I tried to follow them as strictly as I could. Different hospitals and surgical teams have slightly different processes, but here are some basic ways that most teams help you prepare for your cabbage surgery. Before the surgery, you'll meet the members of your surgical team, learn about the surgery plan, and ask questions. To give your team all the information they need for surgery, you'll probably have tests such as a breathing test, a chest x-ray, and blood and urine tests. You may need to stop or start taking certain medications before your surgery. You might be asked to take some steps ahead of time to protect your skin from infection such as using an antibacterial nasal ointment or showering with antibacterial soap. Finally, you'll probably be told not to eat or drink anything after midnight the day before your surgery. Before the surgery begins, you'll change into a hospital gown, have the hair clipped in the area where the surgeon will make incisions, have your blood sugar checked, and have an IV started so that fluids and medication can be given through your veins. You'll also meet briefly with your surgical team members. The surgeon can answer any remaining questions you have. The anesthesiologist will explain his or her role and talk about the plan for preventing any pain while you sleep through the surgery. If you've come with family or friends, they can get settled in the surgical waiting room. Open heart surgery lasts at least several hours. The length of the surgery depends on the number of bypasses and the condition of your heart. 
While your surgical team will follow a plan tailored to your specific needs, the surgery usually includes several elements. You'll have medication, so you can sleep and be free of pain during the surgery. Your airways will be kept open with a tube connected to a breathing machine called a ventilator. The surgeon will reach your heart through a chest incision, a cut. A heart-lung bypass machine will take over the work of your heart and lungs and keep your blood circulating. In some cases, a team will choose to operate off-pump on a beating heart and won't need this machine. The team will create the grafts, then close the chest and the other incisions. While you're in surgery, a member of the operating room staff will visit or call the waiting room to update your loved ones. When the surgery is over, your surgeon will come out and talk to them. After your cabbage surgery, you'll move to the intensive care unit, often called the ICU. In the ICU, we'll support your initial recovery and focus on preventing complications. The ICU can be an intimidating place, so it may help to know what you and your loved ones will experience there. You'll see monitoring equipment that measures your heart rate, takes your vital signs, and so on. We'll check your blood sugar. The surgery can temporarily increase your blood sugar, so we monitor it before and after. You may receive insulin for a few days if your blood sugar level is too high. You'll experience some puffiness, a normal result of the fluids given during surgery. The swelling will gradually go away over the next few days. You'll see a variety of tubes. Some tubes drain blood and fluids, and other tubes deliver fluids and medication. You'll also have a ventilator and tube to help you breathe. You won't be able to talk and your hands will be secured to protect the tube, but you'll have medications to help you relax. As soon as you can breathe on your own, the tube will be removed. In the ICU, you'll start working with respiratory therapists who will help you breathe deeply and cough and use a spirometer to measure and increase your breathing capacity. You'll also work with physical therapists or therapists from cardiac rehab a program of education, support, and supervised exercise. You'll gently move your arms and legs or begin walking with support. You'll have support stockings, often called TED hose, to prevent blood clots, improve circulation, and reduce swelling in your legs. It is important to control your level of pain after the surgery, so we will frequently ask you to rate your pain from zero, no pain, to 10, the worst pain. We want to make sure your pain level is below a five, so don't try to be a hero. Answer the question honestly and ask for more pain medication if you need it. Once your condition is stable, you'll be moved to a cardiac unit until you're well enough to go home. Moving out of the ICU is an important milestone. It means your health is improving. Here's what you can expect in the cardiac unit continued monitoring and treatment to promote your recovery, increased activity to build your strength and lower the chance of complications, continued work with physical therapy or cardiac rehab, and home instructions to help you prepare to go home from the hospital. And once the circulation to the heart is better, the circulation throughout the body is better, you start getting that oxygen all over the place and your whole body responds. It's terrific. If you have questions about cabbage surgery, please feel free to ask someone in your care team. To learn more about how to care for yourself once you go home, watch the segment called Recovery After Open Heart Surgery.